say a little bit of the local language before I begin. Wanya, Wanya Nalam, Wanya Nalam Gan, Wanya Nyerin, Wanya Nyerin Gan. Gari Nenami Duja Mobiro no Gai Mamuna Gai Gabi Duma Nyongu. A bit of a tongue twister, like the English though. But all I said then was I was just welcoming you fellas where my family used to go out and get their food and bring it back to their families to eat. And just welcoming all your female ancestor spirits in your mail. Um, ancestor spirits. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> but my family, all my great, 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 there's a lot of great grandmother there. Her name was Susan Andy, but she was born in Mooloolawa. That's how I get my kind of connection, or Kabi Kabi connections and all that. Also through my grandmother, my father, um, you know, growing up on the coast. But his name, my dad's, my dad's name, she was born in Budrum around 1923. Also connections through her. She was born in the bush. <laughs> very old school. She was very, actually, talking about growing up in a tin shed shack on top of Budrum. And... You know, not having any floor, not having any ground. The dirt was the, the ground. And she reckoned, oh, yeah, I used to sweep the dirt off the dirt floor. Because <laughs> they walked so much on the dirt, turning like concrete. So you sweep the dirt off. And it was her job to get the water for her family. She was the oldest of her seven um, siblings. She was the oldest girl, sorry. And she had six younger brothers. So she's like the mother. <laughs> but it was her job to get water for them. She used to go down the bottom of a bunch of the clean springs and walk up the, up and down that mountain. She used to do it two times a day, she reckons. Her name was Plinto. It's fast in our language. Yeah, you have to be fast walking up to that mountain every day, two times a day. Look at us. But our name was Pauline, Chili. We were, we were part of the Malulaba, Malulaba clan, which is pretty much the Malula Plains clan back in the day was pretty much like around Kalandra, Maruchido. You got all the way down to um, Yendina, Nambo, them type areas. That was all considered the Malula Plains. Uh, Malulaba in our language talks about the red belly black snake. Hey, look at us. <laughs> yeah, Mululu is the red belly black snake, and Mululu Ba. Is red belly black snake home, <laughs> and that was our kind of our totem. Uh, yeah, our totem's like you know that animal you can't hurt. You know, like that John Snow fellow's got a totem. <laughs> that wolf, you know, kind of like that. If we had a, if we had banners, if we had banners, the red belly black snake would be in our banner. <laughs> but you know, it was an animal that was very sacred to our people. It was like kind of like a brother animal to us. Even in our designs, we'd go to Brisbane, or even you know we go to Kabulcha, or we go to Noosa. Um, different clan groups. We spoke the same language, but we did the different clan groups down there. But we would have that um, when we go to different clans, we'd have the red belly black snake colours on our body, and they go, "Oh, that colours from Murchido and Lulaba. That's that clan there, the red belly black snake clan." It was kind of like our flag. <laughs> but Murchido, that's another red and black animal too. Uh, Murchido in our language talks about the black swan, or moose, you know, and Uchi is the colour red, and Da is its home, Murchida. <laughs> Black Swan home. <laughs> I think that Noosa River is the new Black Swan home, though, eh? That's where they all went. There's no Black Swans in the Mooch River anymore. But there was, apparently, about a lot of them back in the day. And they're, but they're very aggressive animals. <laughs> but unfortunately, they did get culled off the river because they attack everyone on the river. Any boat, they will chase you off that river a kilometre away from their nest. The males, they're very territorial. <laughs> and they're males. Even though the warriors around here would go into war, they'd reckon they'd paint their noses bright red. Trying to represent the um, fearlessness of the black swan. Because that fellow's got no fear at all. You know, he will protect his babies to the death. They reckon the honey badger's got uh, the most fearless animal in the world. The honey badger and the black swan are reckon tied first. <laughs> yeah, that black swan back down the line as well. Like a honey badger. But yeah, no fear. But he's a very, he's a totem animal as well. Red sippy down sippy in our language talks about a small winged creature. So you can call like a butterfly sippy. <laughs> or like a mosquito. <laughs> But well, there is a name for a mosquito though, you might have heard of it. A place called Ningi Ningi. Hey, you need to be sleeping at night and you go, Ningi 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 Ningi. <laughs> but it's the Bribery Island, Bribery Island Township, Ningi Ningi. A lot of these towns around here are actually Kabi Kabi language. Um, I was born in Nambour. Nambour talks about the red flowering paperbark tree. Like where, you know, the other clans, you know, Noosa. I don't think Noosa is an um, Aboriginal word. Hey, Noosa. But Kabulcha. Kabulcha is carpet snake. Carpet snake clans. Um, you go around Calandra, Calandra's a white beech tree. I live in Yandina, Yandina means to go on foot. Kawana, wildflower. All of my bedroom, and my grandmother bought the bedroom talking about the hairpin honeysuckle, which is a native banksia. A lot of them, eh? <laughs> hey, you carry money around here, you flying fox. Go down Croyz, Croyz means uh, the mountain crossing in Grand Peak. <laughs> all these towns, hey, you learn the language just by uh, learning all the towns. Like, it's, yeah, it's hidden, it's hidden in the town's names. I think we're second in uh, Queensland in naming places after Aboriginal language. Okay, so we're right up there. So you, know, you can learn the language just by the 
Yeah, yeah. literally. <laughs> but, you know, uh, we're, as Aboriginal people, we are seasonal people. We did leave, live with the seasons, 24 different seasons around here originally. Uh, 24, we just come out of the Rechmi bark season, which is uh, indicating for the mullet runs. But when it gets hot, though, you're going up to the mountains where it's cool, cooler. <laughs> but with the bunya festivals, December, the start of December, there's a bunya tree, it's like a dinosaur tree, they reckon. It's been around for like 60 million years. But it's a big, like, it looks like a big pine cone tree. Nah, spikier than a pine cone. Way spikier. But you get up the top of that tree, there's a big green pod. And in that pod is like 150 bunya, bunya fruits. And they go up the top of the, top of the tree. Uh, you don't want to wait till they fall off the tree either, by the way. Because they're all they're all uh, powdery. And you can't. They're not as crunchy and juicy. They're not as ripe when they fall off the tree. So you've got to pick them at the top. And they were used to be, you know, <clears throat> they're thousands. They get thousands of years old these trees. And fellas would never cut them down. So you're talking about thousands and thousands of years old these trees. So they get about 15 meters round and 100 meters tall back in the day. And fellas would not cut them down. They would even cut grooves in them to help climb them. <laughs> They'd use a vine, and that vine use a vine to get the for 30 meters up. And that's the first branch. And then when you get to the first branch, it's like a ladder then. A ladder, spiky ladder. <laughs> but then, then they would chuck it to see if it was fully ripe for the women and children. And if it was good, they would chuck it down and then the Bunyan festival would begin. And it actually happened up in Mullaney, Montville kind of area. So us Malula Bar followers, we would travel up to Mullaney for the Bunyan festivals. Followers actually would travel as far as 200 kilometers away. So yeah, I don't know about me. I don't know if I walk that far these days to get in a car, travel that far in a car maybe. <laughs> But yeah, people will walk that far back in the day. They're very fit people. Um, sometimes, you know, you get married off. Their, their grandfather might be from Mullaney. He got married off once upon a time down to Fellas in Tweed or something, you know. And he has to carry his grandfather back to the place where he was born. The one of the warriors, you know. So, yeah, they were fit people. But you, you get married at these places. Uh, back in the day, you could not marry whoever you wanted. It was arranged. There's these festivals, you get arranged marriages. And they go to different tribes, get married off in different families and all that kind of thing. But also there was trading going on, trading of the goods, um, you know, different trade. Like you might have good volcanic rock and follows in the desert might not have, we have around here. That might give us some cool purple ochre that we don't have. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of like our currency was trading, a lot of trading, a lot of songs and dances being exchanged. It's pretty much a sharing of cultures from the different tribes. There was a fellow named um, Tom Petrie. He was the first uh, explorer to come to the Sunshine Coast, like from Brisbane. And he came with a Brisbane, bunch of Brisbane blacks. <laughs> had the P, painted the Tom P tree. Um, but yeah, he went to the Bunyan Festivals. That's the only reason I know about it. Because <laughs> he wrote down in his Explorer journals. So you can even look it up online. And he wrote all the stuff that happened on the Bunyan, the Bunyan Festivals. But, you know, yeah. So it's pretty um, pretty special, this, this country. Uh, Sunshine Coast. We're known for being that, the people of the Bunyan tree. Uh, even you know, if I go to the Gold Coast today, or Brisbane, and I have the Bunyan tree painted on myself, they go, oh, that's, that's the fellas from the Sunshine Coast. <laughs> Just because their families, they knew that they, we were the, yeah, we were the Bunya people. But yeah, Bunya is an ancient tree, very special to our families. But you know, we are coming to that season, so get ready, you fellas. They need a lot of Bunyas. So you gotta, gotta climb. Tell your father or something, your, or your youngest son or whatever, the fittest fella in your family, tell them to get that Bunya for you. <laughs> hey, don't wanna wait for it to fall off. <laughs> but it's a super carbohydrate. It's super carbohydrate too, by the way, yeah. It's a superfood. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an avocado. You know, avocado, like you can eat avocado and drink water and survive, which is them too. So everything you need in that bunya, you need to survive is in that bunya. It's one you know, super carbohydrate, superfood. So yeah, very good for you. <laughs> but yeah, you can boil it, bake it, you can cook it any way. I've seen fathers um, mash it up and make pancakes out of it. Okay, that's, yeah, it's like it's a flour or something. <laughs> but yeah, so it's very, very good. But we are the bunya for people. But um, I thought I'd tell you that little, you know, little uh, thing about the bunyas and stuff. I have to. And we're living on the country now. You know, some fellas get bunyas growing in the yard. I mean, they're like, what is that big spiky tree? I don't want to camp underneath it, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, you put your foot shorter, camp underneath that fella. Put on your head. Now, nah, but uh, it's good to know these things, though. You know, custodianship is what our families were about. You know, we were living the seasons. We were making sure that these plants and these animals are here for the next generations. So, you know. It's good to know these things so that we can look after them as well, you know. And the more you know about something, uh, the more you're going to care about it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, one year I'm part of the family. And I like to say, you know, it's one year. The one is like hello, aloha, sorry. It's like hello and goodbye. But anyway, so one year I'm part of the Chili family from around the district. And um, have a good one, you fellas.